In the late months of 1860, a young woman from Virginia escaped slavery while her master was away. By aid of the Underground Railroad, she made her way to the free state of Ohio and to the northern city of Cleveland, where she secured a job as a domestic servant. Though in a free state and in a city rife with abolitionists, the girl's freedom was far from secure. The Fugitive Slave Act, passed in Congress as part of the 1850 Compromise, provided the judicial framework for slave owners to reclaim enslaved people who had escaped to the free north. It made it the duty of every person when called upon by an officer to assist in the capture and return of any fugitive slave. It also made it a crime punishable by fine or imprisonment to in any way assist a slave seeking freedom. Quote, giving them even a crust of bread to save them from starvation was thus a criminal act. The girl's owner, William S. Goshorn, tracked her down and came to Cleveland to reclaim what he saw as his property. Early in the morning of January 19, 1861, Accompanied by three deputy United States Marshals, Goshorn drove to the residence where the girl was employed. They surrounded the house, broke in the door, and seized her by force. The girl's arrest sent Cleveland society into pandemonium. Anti-slavery supporters massed outside the courthouse and the jail where the girl was being held. With five states already in secession, the case was quickly viewed as a test of whether or not the northern states would uphold their end of the 1850 Compromise and enforce the Fugitive Slave Act. Many argued that the court should defy the unjust law and free the girl. Others made it clear that such a decision would cast the volatile nation into civil war. The Cleveland Morning Leader, a radical Republican newspaper that chronicled the story, began to raise money to purchase the girl's freedom from Goshorn and attempt to avert the crisis. A wealthy man, Goshorn appeared uninterested in the offer and seemingly saw the situation as an opportunity to exercise the Fugitive Slave Act. The case was quickly brought to trial Anti-slavery supporters filled the tense courthouse, cramming into the courtroom, filling the stairwells and hallways, and massing outside. After days of litigation, the case was decided when Goshorn presented a $600 bill of sale to the court as evidence that he was the girl's master. Upon her own admission of escaping slavery, Judge Daniel R. Tilden found no option but to enforce the Fugitive Slave Act and return the girl to Goshorn. With Judge Tilden's ruling, violence dotted the streets of Cleveland. U.S. Marshals, armed with truncheons, escorted the girl through the tense crowds to the railroad station, where she was forced to board a train car bound for Virginia. A number of supporters could not tolerate what they saw as an outrage taking place in the free state of Ohio. A plot was hatched to rescue her. Two men boarded the train at Ravenna. Armed with tools, they hoped to separate the cars at a scheduled stop in North Lima, where a crowd of men were waiting to restore the girl to freedom by force. Alerted to the danger, the conductor noticed the armed and angry crowd at the station and sped by without stopping. 